Hello and welcome everyone to another painting video tutorial from Vital Creatives. My name is Ruben Martinez and I'll show you how we painted the miniatures from the Kickstarter from Cool Mini or Not and Spin Master Games. This project is called Marvel United. And these miniatures have a chill style and many of you ask to us about how we did this paint job onto these miniatures. So I'll show you how we do that. Remember if you like this content please like and subscribe this video in the YouTube channel of Vital Creatives in order to support us and make more content for you like this. So let's start. Okay, guys. So here, here. You could see the results after my last painting session. So I speed up the process a little bit of the camera, but mainly I did the same that I did for the face in every part of the miniature. You could see that I highlighted the edges in order to achieve more definition on the miniature and I make final light points in some parts and this is the result okay so I could say that the miniature is near to finish so I need to paint as well this piece which I unglued from the miniature in order to paint it more comfortable now. So it's easy to paint in this way. I'll attach this with a little bit of blue tack to my support and in the position that it will be attached later in the miniature, okay? So, let's start with the weapon, okay? It's pretty easy to paint. I'll use uh, an orange for The, the magic part, okay? <laughs> okay. And I apply with the same techniques that we are now pretty used to to see in this tutorial. Okay, so sorry. Let's start applying a base coat onto this part. Okay. Probably I need to to apply several layers in order to get some coverage of this color. Mm -hmm. You could increase the coverage of your colors adding to the mix other colors with more coverage than, than the current one, okay? 
So I think probably will be the best idea for this part, okay? I do that. Or apply several layers. But adding, for example, a darker brown to the mix, I'll get a more coverage in these parts. This way, you could see how this color covers better than before. It's, it's normal that the lighter colors, especially the ones who have more yellow, These colors, those colors are more hard to, to use for uh, an even cover. So this is another trick for your arsenal in order to make these base coats with light colors, okay? So I let it dry and now I make the base color for the dart. Okay, I use some kind of brown like this, okay? And I'll mix this color with some kind of ochre. Yellow with soccer like this one, for example, okay. And again, it will be hard to cover with the ochre, so I'll mix with the brown color in order to get a more coverage power in my mix in this way okay taking care about the hidden places okay and I let it dry now for the black part I use a little bit of blue the same blue that I used before in the skin and in other parts of the miniature and a little bit of black, okay? You could miss your own black mixing the three primary colors between, between them but for this little part I don't need to, to open three pots and make the mix, okay? It's quick to make in this way. So, I'll add some blue to the to the black and I'll achieve a nice color to make some highlights on this part. Okay. This way. And in this side I use 
little bit of black Okay, I'm painting every part and in this way the first layers are dried and ready to apply a second coat to get a uniform surface of paint. I think that two layers will be enough in order to continue later with some lining. Okay. It's hard to to find all the sides for this element because he is twisting over and over. So I hope I I don't left any part unpainted. <laughs> okay. And in the dart, I will apply another quick layer. Like this. Touch a little bit. The edge. Okay. So now I will start adding some lights to every part, and later I will apply some air blending, like I did before in every part of the miniature. So I hope you you are familiar with the with the process right now. So for adding some light to the orange part, I will use some kind of yellowish and light uh, color. So I'll try. What it looks with this color is yellow, but is it have some some white on the mix so it's everything that I need in order to increase the value of my orange okay so sorry let's see I mix some orange with this other color Probably I need to add other color, I'm not sure. Is lighter, but not enough, I think. So I'll add some kind of this other color, is way lighter. In order to increase the value of 
is light. Only a toad. I think will be enough. Okay. And let's try this mix. And of course, you could red in the spot. Okay, I think it's, it's nice. You take half, little coverage, few coverage, and this will be fixed, adding more layers of this color, so it's not a problem. Okay, so as you could see, I'm highlighting the edges of this magic stuff. And I'm not insisting too much in one part. I let it dry and come back again in order to make an uniform base coat as well for the lights. Sorry, I think I was out the camera. I check the results in different in different angles and I reinforce as well these parts with another coat. And I let it dry again. Of course, you could prime this piece in a lighter color than black, for example, white, and you don't have this kind of problems. Okay, this is another way to make this kind of things. Another layer is needed here, but you start to see how the color is more even and uniform right now with a couple of layers. So it's not a problem for me to build my lights little by little. in this way. Okay. So the miniature is near to finish and as a final detail I'll add some trim light 
the blue trim light in the right side of the miniature so this will be the final touch onto this character I need to highlight the edges of this side in this way And now, this was my first light, <clears throat> now I will add another light in this part, because I think it is pretty nice to suggest uh, the magic uh, stuff like that, more brighter than other things, the miniature. So, for this additional light, I'm mixing the same colors as before, but I'm adding right now more light color than orange, okay? And I'll focus the light in some points like this one and of course I am highlighting the edges the upper left edge this way here a little point of light is needed this edge is highlighted as well and of course this one all the edges, like this one, needs some highlighting. And this one. See how the magic is starting to flow? <laughs> okay, this kind of effects is everything about contrast, okay? So make sure that your lights have high values and your shadows low values. You will achieve the contrast needed. Okay. I will add more light in this side because it is the main view of this element. Okay. And defining the edges a little bit sorry this 
piece is smaller than the miniature and I think I'm going off of the camera sometimes because I have the same point of view okay. So I think it's good for me I don't want to go beyond the the white I don't need to 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 add white of course you will achieve more contrast adding white but the color will be more real so because as I mentioned before I don't use white color pure white, white color on my miniatures you can see white things in the real life pure white things okay every white color in the real life have some color ambience from the surrounding things or from the source of light the sun or the moon for example and these kind of things okay so for the the black parts I will add in more a little touch of the light color to my previous mix okay and is only to highlight this edge and you could highlight a little bit the edges of this element the same color and it's done and last I need to paint the dart so for the lights I will use <coughs> the ochre tone that I put in my wet palette before so I'll take a little bit and I'll try to make some reflection Okay, it's difficult to, to read to some parts when the, the piece is moving okay but I think it's more comfortable than painting attached to the miniature okay and So this is my main reflection. I'll make another in this side because I think in some views you could see this reflection. This way. And 
I make secondary reflection right beneath the dart, okay? So this will bring some metallic sense to this piece. Okay. So now I will need I need to add some final light points to the metal. So for this this I will use the lighter color that I have in my wet palette in order to add some little light points. in this way and in this way Okay, so now this part is more like a metallic part because have some reflection, high contrast reflection, okay? I will reinforce this effect with more paint, some points, and it's done. Okay, I'll retouch some uh, saddles in, in this metal in order to make more defined and sharp this way. So here you go, I have this non-metallic dart finish, <coughs> okay, oh. I forget to add light points in this side, so the process is pretty the same. any light points <clears throat> in order to suggest the reflection okay and now 
I will apply some air blending. Okay, so I will add some diluent in my arras a little bit now a little bit of water you could use again just water but the diluent it helps to not obstruct the the eyebrows I will use some of my previous uh, orange colors, okay. So I will add to the iris orange. And a little touch of this brownish color too increase the coverage only a touch and now sorry is about to eyebrows in the in the parts that I want to make more smooth putting downwards the this piece is easy to to paint those areas because the transitions are less smooth in the places between light and shadow Okay. Only I need a couple of torches because my gradients are uh, are not bad <laughs> in this case. So I need to only make a couple of touches in some parts and I'm ready to go <clears throat> okay I'm thinking I'm thinking in not to overdo this effect so for me is almost ready of course and um, as you could see the same principle applies to the eyebrows like with the brass, the, the orange color has less coverage, so you need to assist a little bit more in order to see some results. But I don't spend too much time with this color, okay? Okay, ready. And now comes the pretty part, I think, which is uh, attach the this piece to the to the main miniature. Okay, so my recommendation to make this kind of things is to paint everything together. But if you can't, like in this case, because this this part 
will be so embarrassing to paint the miniature. Uh, I suggest to, first of all, I have this piece and needs to be glued over this part, okay? So, my recommendation is to scratch a little bit the paint onto the, the part that you need to, to glue, okay? Because this will make a stronger joints rather the, than uh, glue this piece onto the paint already apply it in the miniature so with with a hobby knife you could scratch the paint in this point it's difficult but with some patterns you could get a strong point of gluing okay i will remove with a brush a little bit the excess of dirt okay and now it's ready for gluing. I will use cyanoacrylate glue and sun activator to speed up the process. So I will put a drop of glue in a paper and I'll with a toothpick I'll apply a little bit of glue in this part. You need to be very careful in this step. Okay, so now I have some seconds in order to place this piece in the correct position. Okay, something like that. And now it's glued. You could use the activator to make the gluing uh, quicker. Okay, so now. I blow up a little bit and now I could say that everything is in place and in his final position, okay? So It's ready for the last step about the trim line. 